But did drugs never have a bad influence on the music? Did no, you? because I, I stopped. I mean, the fun, thi the fun thing is, is that uh, I quit doing drugs before I started with music. I just experimented a lot with it and took a lot. But that was okay for me. I never got addicted. I was like, okay, this is it, you know. Now it's time. And I had a bunch of really terrible experiments where I got, this is really terrible for your body. Mm -hmm. So when I joined bands, um, yeah, I was only drinking alcohol, which is of course drugs. But it's not that I took uh, any cocaine or speed or uh, speed or, or uh, ecstasy or something. Anymore. Socially accepted drugs and alcohol. Yeah, more or less. <laughs> you know, and sometimes a little joint, but you know, not That's nowadays not anymore. It's still only alcohol. Okay. Um, yeah, I was just wondering, Derek, your big breakthrough uh, with, with Asvik. Do you sometimes still, yeah, you play of course some of the songs, but do you still listen to the records once in a while? I never listen to my own music, only if I need to practice or fresh things up. You know, I think it's a bit silly to just, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sitting at home and going, oh, now I'm going to play myself, damn. It's but just ridiculous, I think. When you look back a little bit from the point where you are now, how do you think you, you were going there musically? Are you still proud of it, do you think? Yes, yeah, I'm proud of it? everything I did, yeah. yeah, still. I mean, it was, Rack was the first album for Asterix and uh, for those times it, sent, it sold remarkably well and we were more or less like immediately an established name, although before I joined Asterix they already had uh, the reputation of uh, that they were one of the bands that sold most demos, you know, without a record company mm -hmm. worldwide. I think they sold somewhere between 500,000 demos, which is really a lot. 500. 500 or 1,000, yeah, okay. I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why a record company was interested in a band like that. But, um, so they had already had a name, but you know, the rec was really, yeah, kind of a boost. These demos, do you still have one yourself? Yeah, I have one, but I'm not, I'm not singing on that one. But yeah, yeah I just had to, because it was always... A item or anything? Yeah, more or less, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, because if you, if, if you take it from there, and yeah, you had, of, of course, uh, hiatus, but from the, the, the period now afterwards that you, you restarted until now, yeah, what is the, the feeling you have now? You're of course older, more mature. Is there still sim, sim, yeah, similarities between you performing now, the intensity and, and, and back then? Or? The intensity, yes, is actually the same. Mm -hmm. you, know, you always go with the feeling on stage that you give everything. I always had that kind of, uh, uh, I say it, yeah, that was just my, my, um, my mentality. You know, you go on stage, you have, just have to give everything to the people that pay money to see yeah. you play. You know, I, I expect that also from the bands that I want to watch and play. Mm -hmm. um, but nowadays, it's like you enjoy it more when you are on stage. You are more, you're more conscious of what, you, what you're really doing. And you really enjoy it, like, you know, you, you feel that you're privileged to, to be able to do this. And that, you know, actually people still come to your show and watch you and enjoy it together with you and have fun, cheer along with the songs. I mean, it's just, yeah, I mean, I mean, there's no drug or whatever that can, uh, that can get, make you get that same kind of feeling, really. It can be addictive in that sense. Uh, it's very addictive, yeah. yeah, it's very addictive. Stage is an addictive thing. Yeah, did, did, did you at some point miss it when you were not playing or you Yeah, I was. Off? Well, not, not consciously, mm -hmm. but um, uh, I had a colleague at work, uh, who started a small band and was asking me all the time because when he found out that, uh, yeah, I, I played in some bands that he really liked. He didn't know before? No, he didn't know before. It was a coincidence. He saw my tattoo with a band name. He goes like, why do you have that tattoo? He goes like, because I played it. What? I go, no, 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 no. I'm not going to do this again. I'm working, you know? And then, um, uh, yeah, he wanted me to do a demo with him. So I said, okay, just to help you out. And then they had a small show in Italy. And that's where I was, even it was very small, I was on stage and I realized, like, fuck, I missed this. You know, I really missed this. Is That's this where really I started back again. Far apart from your other life or your, your, your regular life, so to say? Well, uh, nowadays, um, it is my life. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not having any, any job next to it. But uh, back in those days, I mean, I had a, I really had a, I had a job that I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. So. Um, what, what did you do uh, before? Um, I think in English you call it a warehouse manager. Okay. You know, you take care of a warehouse and all the incoming goods. Mm -hmm. And it was really huge. I mean, it was a really responsible job, but also hard labor. Mm -hmm. And uh, I enjoyed both, you know, doing both. I mean, I can't sit in an office like all day and, mm -hmm. you know, I, I need to do something.